Let's take a look at the last problem of AI MD 2011. For an integer m, the equation x cubed minus 2011x plus m equals 0 has three integral roots a, b, and c. Find the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b plus the absolute value of c. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. Let me first introduce the tool that I'm going to use for this problem. It's the Vieta's formula for qubit equations. In fact, this is a simplified version, but it's sufficient for this problem. For In general, for a qubit equation, say, with a um, coefficient of x cubed to be 1, which means um, this polynomial is monic. So that means it's just kind of a scaled version of um, a general qubit equation. Then um, for roots p, q, r of this equation, these three roots will satisfy three facts. The first is that their sum is minus a, um, negative of the coefficient of x squared. Then p, q plus q, r plus r, p. We choose um, two of them from um, the three roots, uh, so we're three combinations, and we multiply um, each case and add them up. It's kind of a symmetric sum. Then this is equal to b, the coefficient of x. And finally, if we multiply all three of them together in one go, then it's equal to minus c, where c is the constant term of the cubic equation. And now to the main problem. So for our cubic equation, this is this looks uh, shorter than um, the general form because uh, there is a term missing, which is the x squared term is missing. That means the coefficient of x squared is zero. So we can immediately um, use the Vieta's formula and say that the sum of roots is zero. And furthermore, I can say that the sum of pairwise products is exactly the coefficient of x, which is negative 20, 11. And because um, the, pro the product of roots is uh, minus m, and we do not know the value of m, so we, do, uh, we disregard that for the time being. Now, that is all we have, so we try to um, use kind of a substitute one of the equation in the, into another. So I label them first. Then I'm going to rewrite the first equation by saying that a is minus of b plus c. And then I'm going to put this into the second equation. So. I group the a terms, so that is a times b plus c, and now a is minus of b plus c, so I have this, and at, together with bc, the sum is minus 20, 11, and I can simplify that a bit, and then I will have b squared plus bc plus c squared is equal to 20, 11. And of course, similarly, I can um, say that a squared plus ab plus b squared is also 2011 and same for uh, c squared plus uh, c a plus a squared is also 2011 by symmetry right now i'm going to use one of them and approach it in two different uh, from two different directions so the first thing that i'm going to do is a kind of a magic trick is to notice that uh, b squared plus bc plus c squared, which is clearly smaller than b plus c whole squared. In fact, I'm going to establish a bound um, on b squared plus bc plus c squared, where the lower and upper bounds is a factor of b plus c whole squared. So I'm going to try whether it can be always greater than or equal to some constant times b plus c whole squared. And I'm going to try that um, in another column. So I know that it's less than or equal to b squared 
plus bc plus c squared. And now I can rearrange the terms so that 1 minus lambda times b squared plus c squared is greater than or equal to 2 lambda minus 1 times bc. And so um, I'm going to move the 1 minus lambda to the other side because clearly you can see that the lambda cannot be uh, greater than 1 so I can just safely move the 1 minus lambda to the other side. Now this is a very um, familiar inequality uh, which kind of resembles the fact that uh, b squared plus c squared is always greater than or equal to 2bc and this is actually from like either amgm or you can just um, move 2bc to the left hand side and you know the left hand side is then the perfect squared which is always non-negative so I can try to solve the equation Two lambda minus one over one minus lambda, the fraction at the, on the third line is equal to two. Then two lambda minus one equals to two minus two lambda, and so solving we know that lambda is equal to, equal to three over four. So now I've managed to establish a bound on our expression. Well, I, maybe I can just erase this line and replace the lambda by 3 over 4 and this will hold for all b and c now from this I can say that the middle part is the equal to 2011 and then for b plus c is actually equal to minus a so Minus a whole square is just a squared. And so this bound in turns become a bound on a squared. So a squared is then at least 2011 and is then at most 8044 over 3. So now that leaves not many choices left for, for a, which is that a can be uh, say 45, the smallest one is 45 because 45 squared is then 20, 25, then 46, 47, all the way up to 51 because this number is smaller than 2700. So we know that uh, A can have 52. So that leaves only seven choices. Now here comes the question Do we, uh, how do we test the uh, how do we test um, um, these possible cases? Like, what what do we put the values into? The answer is, I'm going to pick another equation, which is this, and try to solve this equation in another way. Is that I'm going to consider this equation as a quadratic about B, so I can rewrite the green equation highlighted in yellow into this form and use the quadratic formula. So it's minus a plus or minus where well, the main part is a square root is a squared minus 4 times a squared minus 2011 over 2. And we know that for b to be integer, this very important part inside the square root, which is or you can also call that the discriminant. The, discriminant must be a perfect square or else it can't even be rational not to mention that being an integer so we know that 8044 minus 3a squared must be a perfect squared so now what we're going to do is we're going to test these seven numbers 45 up to 51 and see whether any of them after putting into 8044 minus 3a squared can become a perfect squared. So we test one by one. 45 squared is 2025, and the difference is 1969, not a squared. 
8044 minus 3 times 2116 is equal to 1696, again not a square, 2209, the difference is 1417, again not a square, 2304, and that's uh, 6912, so that's 1132, again not a square. Next square is 2401, and the difference this time is 841. Bingo! It's a square, because it's 29 squared. Maybe I can include that as well. And the last two squares are 2500 and 2601 respectively, and the differences are 544, and 2, 4, 1, both not a square. So that leaves only one solution for A, which is that A is equal to 49. And in this case, B is equal to minus 49 plus or minus 29 over 2, which gives minus 10 or minus 39. And from the fact that the sum of a, b, and c are 0, we know that c has to be minus 39 or minus 10. So therefore, our required answer is then 49 plus 39 plus 10, and that's 98. So that's our final answer. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments. If you like my videos, Make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you for your support. See you next time.